Okay, welcome to Concept 3.8. We're talking fiscal policy. Now, we just got talk, done talking about in our last video that if you leave it alone, supply takes it at home, the economy self-corrects. The problem is in the long run, as uh, John Maynard Keynes once said, in the long run, we're all dead. So we can't just wait for this. We have to sometimes in a severe recession, step in and try and fix things. Part of that fixing is called fiscal policy. Let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, you need to know that consumers are really, really important to what happens in our economy. Recessions and inflationary gaps are most often caused by changes in consumption. So a couple of definitions we have to get under our belt when you uh, see these questions. First, disposable income. What do we mean by that? Disposable income is just the income after taxes. Okay, so it's my total income minus taxation. And we can do two things with that. We can spend it or we can save it. I can increase disposable income by lowering taxes, for example. Okay, so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about changes in fiscal policy or changes in consumption. We're talking about consumption or income minus is taxes. That's the money that they're deciding to spend. Second definition you need to know is called autonomous consumption. It's the idea that people will always consume a certain amount no matter what. Even if our income goes down to zero, you make no dollars, you're still going to spend because you need things. You're going to spend on food. You're going to spend on shelter. You're going to spend on medical care, the things that you absolutely need. Now, if you're spending money that you don't have, that, of course, is dis savings or debt, as we call it. Dis savings means our savings fall into the negative. So if autonomous consumption is going up, if people are spending more money and saying, hey, this is a part of what we need in order to be alive, then that can also increase consumption overall and vice versa. So that's the two major definitions you need to know. Otherwise, they'll throw these into questions uh, and it'll confuse you. All right. So when consumers unexpectedly spend more or unexpectedly spend less, that's when our economy is in trouble. We talked about that with the fear fairy on the, on the video, right? Uh, that's when we fall into recessions or that's when we have an inflationary gap. Now, there are two tools that we can use to try and stabilize this if we're not willing to leave it alone and let time heal those wounds, <laughs> leave it alone, supply takes it home. If instead, we try to get active to fix it, which most of the time we do, we have two tools. Tool number one is for the government. It's fiscal policy, which is what this concept is. Fiscal policy is action taken by the government to fix it. Politicians love to take fiscal policy because it helps them get elected. You can't go up to a podium and say, hey, uh, we're just going to leave this alone and eventually it'll solve itself. You step up and say, hey, here's what we're doing to try and fix this recession, give people jobs again, et cetera, et cetera. That involves changes in taxes and changes in government spending, the two things the government can control. The other side of it is a banking one. It's called monetary policy. We have a whole unit on it. A monetary policy is action taken by the Federal Reserve or a central bank that changes the supply of money. We'll talk about that later, but that's the second tool. Today, we're talking about fiscal policy. So let's get into it. We have two types of fiscal policy, discretionary and non-discretionary fiscal policy. Discretionary fiscal policy is active policy. We're doing this on purpose to fix a recession right now or fix an inflationary gap right now. So these are active actions taken by the government. The government takes these actions in order to either expand the economy, so get it, try to kick off an expansionary phase, or contract the economy to pull us back from inflation when we're in recession or inflationary gaps. So two purposes, expand the economy or contract the economy. And we do this through oops, two ways, two tools. First, we can change taxes. Second, we can change government spending. We know a change in taxes changes disposable income, which will change consumption. We know a change in government spending will change government spending, which changes government spending, which changes aggregate demand. Okay, so let's talk contractionary fiscal policy. Again, the goal of contractionary fiscal policy will be to reduce aggregate demand. We're trying to shift aggregate demand to the left back to long run aggregate supply, which I'll show you here in a second. So we use this when we have an inflationary gap, when my current GDP is beyond my full employment GDP, or my current unemployment rate is less than my natural rate of unemployment, when inflation is going up. 
So because I'm trying to reduce inflation and reduce GDP, I have two things I can do. First, I can decrease government spending. We call these austerity measures. The government reduces spending on things, uh, cuts spending in order to reduce aggregate demand. This is very rare. The government does not like to reduce their spending, uh, but it is a possible way of doing contractionary fiscal policy. The second, probably just as unpopular, is an increase in taxes. We can increase taxes on consumers. And by doing that, aggregate demand will shift left back to full employment. Most of the time, because the government does not like to increase taxes, most of the time they'll use some sort of combination of the two of these. They'll do a slight increase in taxes and they'll do a slight decrease in government spending to try and maintain stability. But because both of these are unpopular, this is kind of a side note, but because both of these are unpopular, decreasing government spending and an increase in taxes, the vast majority of the time, we just let the Federal Reserve and monetary policy take care of our contractions. Okay, second type is expansionary fiscal policy. Expansionary fiscal policy is used to reduce recessionary gaps. We're trying to increase GDP, reduce unemployment, right? We're in a recession. We're trying to expand, kick off an expansionary phase in our business cycle. How do we do that? We increase government spending, which the government loves to do, and we decrease taxes, which the government loves to do. Both of those will get you uh, your job. And some sort of combination of the two is normally what we do because sometimes when we say, hey, we're going to do this new project, people say, hey, how are you going to pay for that? And they're worried that they're going to go into debt for sure. Um, so a decrease in taxes helps with that. People love decrease in taxes. Government loves to promote decreases in taxes. Um, so both of those are normally work together because government spending has more of a profound impact than a change in taxes. But again, to expand our economy, increase spending or decrease taxation. All right, let's try it all. We're going to put it all together here. Okay, so what do we have here? We have, look, long run average supply indicates our full employment GDP rate is going to be $1,000 billion, $1 trillion. That's where we want to be. However, currently, aggregate demand and aggregate supply intersect at $500 billion. What kind of a gap do we have? That's right. We have, oh, I think I have questions. There we go. That's right. We have a recessionary gap. So I'm just going to put RG. We have a recessionary gap here of how much? Of $500 billion. How do I know it's $500 billion? Because I want to be at $1 trillion. I'm currently at $500 billion. I am below where I want to be. Recessionary gap of $500 billion. Okay. Do we need contractionary? Contract, shift aggregate demand to the left. Or expansionary? Fiscal policy, expand, shift aggregate demand to the right. Of course, we need expansionary fiscal policy, right? If we're currently in a recession, we need to expand our economy by shifting aggregate demand to the right. Now, I know if I just left it alone, supply would take it home. In a long run, wages will eventually fall. Aggregate supply will shift right back to full employment GDP. However, remember, we don't like to wait, right? And so most of the time, fiscal policy is going to be involved to reduce suffering. So what are the two options to fix this gap? We have two options. If it's expansionary, we can increase government spending or we can decrease taxes. By increasing government spending, that'll be the G of subjection shifting aggregate demand to the right back to full employment. By reducing taxes, that will increase disposable income, which will increase consumption which will shift aggregate demand to the right, closing our recessionary gap. Okay, so what is the least amount of initial government spending needed to close this gap? So we're focused on government spending. Well, we know a change in government spending times my spending multiplier equals change in GDP. What's my desired change in GDP here? Well, I want GDP to go up by... My gap, $500 billion. Catch that? I need GDP to go up by $500 billion in order to close this gap. Right? I need to close this gap right here, which is a $500 billion gap. So I know $500 billion is my end goal. Now, they tell me MPC is 0.8. What's NPS then? Well, MPC plus NPS equals 1. So NPS is 
0.2. If MPS is 0.2, what's my multiplier? Well, my spending multiplier is going to be 1 over MPS or 1 over 0.2, which we know will be a spending multiplier of 5. So how much of a change in government spending has to be injected into our economy in order to close this gap? It is going to be $100 billion. If I put $100 billion in the economy, it will be spent five times in our economy before it goes away, the impact goes away, which will change our GDP by $500 billion. So $100 billion is going to be the impact that I need. When I do that, it shifts aggregate demand. Notice it's not our supply that fix our economy. When we have fiscal or monetary policy, when we're active, we're shifting aggregate demand. And so when we have $100 billion of government spending, that's the G of Sigjixson, aggregate demand shifts right until I close that gap and I'm back where I want to be at full employment GDP right here. Okay, so that's bringing it all together. I know it seems complex, but you know all this stuff is just piecing it together. Let's try the next one. Okay, what kind of a gap do we have here? Well, we know our current GDP is $100 billion, right? But our full employment GDP, as indicated by long-run aggregate supply, is $80 billion. What kind of a gap do we have? We have, oops, we have a contractionary, or I'm sorry, we have a inflationary gap, an IG. In fact, we have an inflationary gap of 20 billion, the difference between where I am and where I want to be. So we have produced 20 billion too much as a result. So what kind of policy is needed? And you might say, no policy. We overextend, we, we produce beyond our goal. No, 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 no. This could cause hyperinflation, completely devastate our economy. So we do need policy. The policy we need is contractionary policy. Right? We need to contract our economy. We want our demand to shift left back to full employment GDP. We know if we left alone, supply would take it home. Inflation and gap puts upward pressure on wages. Wages rise. Our supply shifts left back to full employment. But we don't have time to wait. So we're going to do contractionary policy right now. We have two options with contractionary policy. Option number one is we can decrease government spending. Option number two is we can increase taxes. So how much of a decrease in government spending is needed to close this gap? Well, we know change in government spending times my spending multiplier, SM, equals change in GDP. How much do I want GDP to change by? Well, I know my gap is 20 billion, so I want this to be negative 20. Why negative 20? I want it to contract, so I know I have to decrease government spending to do that. Now I have to find my spending multiplier. What's my spending multiplier? Well, MPC is 0.5, which means MPS is 0.5. My multiplier is 1 over MPS, or 1 over 0.5, so my spending multiplier is going to be 2. So what times 2 is going to result in negative 20? Negative 10. So if I decrease my government spending by $10 billion, it's going to be spent two times in our economy before its impact runs out which means aggregate demand will shift left because government spending will be falling, shifting us back to full employment GDP. So there you go, $10 billion decrease, aggregate demand shifts left back to full employment. Remember, when we have fiscal policy, it's gonna be shifting aggregate demand. Okay, let's try one more. Maybe, there we go. Okay, so we currently are right here. Let's say we have discretionary fiscal policy, we'll manipulate the falling. So what kind of a gap do we have? We have a recessionary gap. Our full employment is 100 billion. Our current is 80 billion. We have a $20 billion recessionary gap. Let's just read in your graph right here. So what options do we have? Well, we can, sorry, increase government spending, fiscal policy, or we can decrease taxes. Okay, so how much of an increase of government spending will close this gap? We know change in government spending times my spending multiplier equals change in GDP. We know my change in GDP that I want is $20 billion. That's my gap. Do I want it to be positive or negative? Of course, I want it to be positive. I have to close that gap. So this is 20. 
What's my spending multiplier going to be? It's going to be 1 over MPS. MPS is 0 0.2 because MPC is 0 0.8. So my spending multiplier is going to be 5. So how much of a change in government spending is going to close that gap? It's going to be $4 billion. So we just click through there, $4 billion. Look at that. So how much taxes will close that same gap? Okay, so I know that a change in tax times my tax multiplier, sorry, <laughs> equals change in GDP. So I know my change in GDP is 20 billion and I want that to go up. My tax multiplier is MPC over MPS or 0.8 over 0.2, or it's simply my spending multiplier minus one. My spending multiplier is five, which means my tax multiplier is going to be four. Now, I like to kick in a negative because it reminds me what has to happen with taxes in order to make, pull this off. So negative four times what will equal positive 20? Of course, it's negative five. So if I decrease taxes by $5 billion, it's going to have that same impact. Check it out. So a $5 billion tax cut will cause the same change. Notice it takes more of a tax cut to have the same impact as a change in government spending. Okay, so it costs more to cut taxes than it does to spend government spending. Both of those scenarios will result in aggregate demand shifting to the right, closing that gap and getting us back to full employment. That's it for this one. Pulling it all together with fiscal policy. Check out Khan Academy 3.8. Until next time.